International, Steering and Sailing Rules, Rule 9, Narrow Channels. The 1972 Convention of the International Regulations for Preventing Collisions at Sea does not explicitly define narrow channel or fairway. However, according to OxfordDictionaries.com, one of the definitions of channel is a navigable passage in a stretch of water otherwise unsafe for vessels, and 33 CFR 166.105 defines fairway as a lane or corridor in which no artificial island or fixed structure, whether temporary or permanent, will be permitted. So, a narrow channel or fairway is a restricted waterway. Moving on. A vessel proceeding along the course of a narrow channel or fairway shall keep as near to the outer limit of the channel or fairway which lies on her starboard side as is safe and practicable. Buoys may mark the outer limits of channels and fairways. The watch officer or boat operator determines how close to the outer limit of the channel or fairway is safe and practicable. Several safety factors will have to be considered. For example, vessel traffic density, ship-to-ship -ship interaction, bank cushion, and suction. Current speed can vary between 1 to well over 3 miles per hour. Possible silt buildup on the inside of river bends, and much more. A vessel of less than 20 meters in length or a sailing vessel shall not impede the passage of a vessel which can safely navigate only within a narrow channel or fairway. A large deep draft vessel in a narrow channel or fairway can be severely restricted in terms of maneuvering. However, a smaller vessel does not have the same restriction. Hence, the rules forbid vessels of less than 20 meters in length or a sailing vessel to impede the passage of a vessel that can safely navigate only within a narrow channel or fairway. A vessel engaged in fishing shall not impede the passage of any other vessel navigating within a narrow channel or fairway. Vessels are not restricted from fishing in a narrow channel or fairway. However, this paragraph directs vessels engaged in fishing not to impede the passage of any other vessel navigating within a narrow channel or fairway. A vessel shall not cross a narrow channel or fairway if such crossing impedes the passage of a vessel which can safely navigate only within such channel or fairway. The latter vessel may use the sound signal prescribed in Rule 34D if in doubt as to the intention of the crossing vessel. Rule 34, Paragraph D, consists of five short blasts on the whistle and an optional light signal of at least five short and rapid flashes to indicate doubt. In a narrow channel or fairway, when overtaking can take place only if the vessel to be overtaken has to take action to permit safe passing. The vessel intending to overtake shall indicate her intention by sounding the appropriate signal prescribed in Rule 34C1. The vessel to be overtaken shall, if in agreement, sound the appropriate signal prescribed in Rule 34C2 and take steps to permit safe passing. If in doubt, she may sound the signals prescribed in Rule 34D. The vessel wanting to overtake another vessel must not proceed to do so unless the other vessel agrees to the passing arrangement. This rule does not relieve the overtaking vessel of her obligation under Rule 13. Even though this paragraph allows the power-driven vessel being overtaken to take steps to permit safe passing, the vessel overtaking is still required by Rule 13 to stay clear of the vessel she is overtaking. A vessel nearing a bend or an area of a narrow channel or fairway where other vessels may be obscured by an intervening obstruction shall navigate with particular alertness and caution and shall sound the appropriate signal prescribed in Rule 34E. The required signal as per Rule 34, paragraph E, is one prolonged blast. Case in History Meeting Near a Major Bend During early morning on February 22, 2015, the St. Louis Express, a container ship, departed Antwerp, Belgium, and was outbound on the Scheldt River, well established in the main channel. She was approaching a nearly 180-degree bend in the river near the town of Hanswert, Netherlands, doing about 17 knots. A pilot was conning the vessel. The second mate was standing the officer of the watch duty, and the master was on the bridge in overall command. All communications between the pilot and vessel traffic service, VTS, centers along the route were in Dutch. According to the pilot, during normal traffic they did not translate communications for the bridge teams unless the bridge team inquired or there was something unusual. 
the Hammersmith Bridge, a considerably larger container ship inbound on the Scheldt River, was doing about 14 knots as she approached the bend. A pilot, the chief mate, and helmsman were on the bridge. Both vessels were aware of the other. The Hammersmith Bridge made the turn around the bend and was partly in the center of the channel when she met the St. Louis Express. Although pilots on both vessels took evasive actions to prevent collision, their actions were insufficient to avoid impact. There were no reported injuries or pollution resulting from the collision. However, damages to both vessels totaled over $500,000. The National Transportation Safety Board determined that the probable cause of the collision between the container ships, St. Louis Express and Hammersmith Bridge, was the failure of the pilots and bridge teams on both vessels to assess the risk of collision, inadequate bridge resource management on both vessels, and a lack of communication between the pilots. Contributing to the accident was the failure to establish adequate passing room between the vessels while meeting near a major bend in a narrow channel. The case offers some important lessons learned. 1. Communicate in tension with other vessels. Rule 7, paragraph A states that every vessel shall use all available means appropriate to the prevailing circumstances and conditions to determine if risk of collision exists. The vessel's VHF radio is also one of those available means. 2. Bridge team members must communicate with each other. A team member can contribute more towards safe navigation if he or she is fully aware of the prevailing or expected circumstances. 3. If vessels must meet in or near a major bend in a narrow channel or fairway, they must do so with extreme caution. 4. Stay to the right in a narrow channel or fairway. Any vessel shall, if the circumstances of the case admit, avoid anchoring in a narrow channel. In case of an emergency, a vessel can drop her anchor to help her stop to prevent danger to vessel and crew. However, the vessel has to be moved as soon as the emergency is resolved. Consult the applicable CFR or Coast Pilot for notification protocol in such a situation.